just to set the scene, um, this is our graffiti fleet as it stands at the moment from the top starting with the little bus. That's our the graffiti removal program bus um, that we use with the Department of Justice every second Saturday afternoon for about six hours. This program has been a part a, in partnership with the Department of Justice for about 10 years now. Um, the next vehicle is our um, council's graffiti removal truck. We've got two full-time staff on this truck. Um, they're equipped with an iPad that they upload images of graffiti to the GRIP um, software system, which some of you may be familiar with, but we're happy to tell you more about that later. Um, and then down the bottom is our latest addition, which is our community graffiti trailer enabled by the um, Graffiti Prevention and Removal Grant from 2012. In addition to these vehicles, um, we have a strong relationship with community groups and um, that's why I've invited Margaret to come today with me. Um, Neighbourhood Watch has been a strong partner with us for quite a number of years, so um, we're really um, privileged in Maroondah to have that strong relationship with them and they're a very active group. Um, in addition to those projects, um, we also do some, have a one-on-one -on -one field officer from Department of Human Services. With all these um, vehicles on board and the programs and partnerships we have, we have very minimal outstanding um, graffiti removal requests at the end of every month. So we um, feel quite proud of that fact that we can keep quite on top of our graffiti. And of course our key partner in this project was um, Marinda Neighbourhood Watch. So this, our final product, we did have an opportunity to launch it at the Eastern Regional Graffiti Network meeting in July last year. Um, and you'll see Elizabeth there and Margaret and our CEO Frank Dixon and Fred Painter who's up behind. And in front is our Mayor, Mayor at the time, Councillor Rob Steen, who also chaired the Marinda Safety Committee. So it was um, a really great outcome and we were really happy to be able to launch it in that way. Um, in terms of community engagement, our prime purpose for the trail was for the community to use it. So we've um, tapped into council networks um, through different teams at council to promote the use of the trailer, include, including um, our business and development unit, our neighbourhood houses, our sporting groups, um, to name a few. Neighbourhood Watch remains the key partner and our, uh, the understanding we have is that for at least one weekend a month it is theirs to use. So um, the availability depends on um, their roster of activities. Um, we have regular contact with Neighbourhood Watch and I think Margaret you would say it's been a great one for kind Definitely. of renewing and re reinvigorating Council's relationship with Neighbourhood Watch and um, Fred and I were very fortunate last year to be granted a state award by Neighbourhood Watch which was a real thrill. Um, so uh, a challenge too is to how we attract other community groups. So um, a little bit further in the presentation I'll show you that we have actually advertised in the local paper and that's been a very um, successful way of just letting people know our trailer's there and um, available for people to use. Um, in terms of ongoing costs, um, it, it's what we expected. Um, there is uh, the labour of the depot staff in terms of training our volunteers. However, once trained, um, that information can be passed on to other volunteers. Yeah. So we've got quite a well-trained crew in Neighbourhood Watch. If a school or a kinder comes to um, use the trailer, then we will do it again. We don't mind. It's half an hour. The trailer's getting used half an hour to an hour, depending on how easy people find the equipment to use, but they will get training in all aspects of the equipment on the trailer, the chemicals that are there, and the protective gear they need to use. Um, other things that do have a bearing is that it has become part of our asset management system and is managed by our depot. Registration costs are minimal, I think it's $160 a year, and just replacing materials. But if our community wasn't helping us and assisting us in removing graffiti, then we would have a cost in terms of our crew going out there and removing it. So it's offset by those relationships that we have. Um, so into the future, I think our main challenge is continuing to engage our community. To put the truck out there, the trailer out there, is something that's very easy for them to access, very easy for them to tow, and to just keep looking for opportunities for people that may wish to use it. We had a fabulous response to this out in our two local papers. Um, and we'll probably do that on an annual or half an, you know, half a year basis. 
Uh, looking into the future, um, it's probably the same for all of you. We look at targeting graffiti hotspots. We've got a couple of places that just continually get tagged and we're always in there. Um, so uh, Fred, if he was here, would be able to speak more to that. Um, we'd like to work a bit more in the preventative arena with our young people. Um, we've got some couple of submissions in at the moment for public art projects that will support um, the development that's happening in Maroonda at the moment uh, in the near future around the train station, the Eastland redevelopment, the new library, Costco, all of those. And we're trialling some lighting innovation. We've got some, it's very beautiful and it's very wasted in a way because its location is tucked away, but we've got a fabulous um, tunnel that the graffiti removal program was always removing graffiti on and we've put a movement sensor light um, installation in Larissa Avenue um, which is in the Lake to Creek project um, between the lake and Ringwood Lake and the Mullum Creek Trail, Eastland Trail. So that's very worth seeing and we're really looking forward to monitoring the impact of that lighting in terms of graffiti in that um, space.